stood down in front of this door since you left. Not one person come up and congratulated me. And not only that, not even one person admitted that they saw me on the program. Now, Ralph, how can you talk like that? Norton was over at the bowling alley with all your friends watching the show, and Trixie was just here to say she saw you on the show. She was? Well, uh, what did she think of me? Well, she said you're the biggest thing on television. <laughs> you know, that Trixie's a good kid. And Norton's all right, too. They're a two true blue friends. Well, they won't regret it, because when I celebrate, they'll celebrate with me. Celebrate what? Celebrate the winning of the $99,000 answer. That's what. It won't be long now, sweetheart. We'll be living on Park Avenue. And where you see how different this furniture looks when it's in a Park Avenue apartment. <laughs> being a little bit too ambitious. You've heard some of those questions. They get pretty tough after the first two. So what? That's why I picked a subject that I know. Popular songs. I know all about popular songs. I know, Ralph, but you're not an expert. What do you mean I'm not an expert? Ever since I was a kid, Alice, I liked music, especially popular music. <laughs> when I was growing up, that's all I did. I used to eat, sleep, and think music. I wasn't like those other bums around the neighborhood, you know. Hanging around the pool room or hanging out in the corner. Not me. Every night in a week, I was up some ballroom listening to a dance band. Well, I'd be very proud of you, you know, if you answered the first two questions and came home with six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars? <laughs> a mere bag of shells. Well, will you please be sensible? They don't hand you the ninety-nine thousand dollars. You gotta answer questions, Ralph, and they're very tough questions. I know what you're trying to say, Alice. What you're trying to say is your husband is too dumb to answer any questions. Well, that's why you're wrong. And for your information, a 12-year-old kid on one of these programs walked in and answered a $16,000 question. 12 years old she was. Stands the reason, me, a grown man, I must be able to answer the same questions that a 12-year-old kid can answer. Spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> I'll spell it. I'll spell it. Well, go ahead. I'll spell it when you give me sixteen thousand dollars for spelling it. Sixteen thousand for spelling it. I'll give you thirty-two thousand if you can say it. <laughs> you know a lot about popular songs. Let's say you know all there is to know about popular songs. There is just one thing that you're overlooking, Ralph. You're going on a television show, a big television show. Millions of people are going to be looking at you. And big money at stake. Well, you're liable to get nervous, Ralph, and forget what you do know. Any person could do that. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm at my best when I'm under pressure. I never get nervous. Oh, that's right, I forgot. You're always calm. You have to be in the kind of work you do. You're a man who bribes the dust. Go ahead, Alex. Try to discourage me. But you're getting no place because I'm going for that $99,000 answer. And I'm not leaving one stone unturned. There'll be no chances for mistakes. I'm not leaving this house once this week. I'm staying in every night. I'm studying every song that was ever written. I'm going to buy sheet music and study that. I'm going to buy records and study that. I'm going to rent a piano. I'm going to have Norton come down here and play the piano. Every song he's ever heard, and I'm going to study them. Ralph, that's going to cost us a fortune. It'll take every penny we have saved. We won't have one cent left in the bank. When the smoke clears away, we'll have $99,000. Yes, sir. This is the time I'm going to get my pot of gold. Just go for the gold. You've already got the pot. Oh, here's the dress. 
material unless you said you wanted. Oh, but you didn't have to make a special trip just for that. Oh, I didn't. We went to the movies in the neighborhood. And so it wasn't out of our way to come here at all. Well, why don't you sit down and have a cup of coffee? Oh, I can't. Your father's waiting in the car and he's double parked. How's the brain doing? Oh, Mother. What a week. The piano and the phonograph have been going every single night until 3 o'clock in the morning. He's been fighting out the window with Mr. Garrity upstairs. Strangers have been dropping in here all the time to give him advice. The letters have been pouring in all the time. He's been staying home from work without any salary, paying for all of this stuff. He's going to have to win that 99000 just to break even. Where is he now? <laughs> He's down at Mrs. Manicotti's. She's helping him brush up on popular songs that were taken from Italian classics. This boy isn't missing a trick. Hmm. Well, I've got to go. I'll keep my fingers crossed for Ralph tomorrow oh. night. Thanks, Mom. Say hello to Pop for me. <coughs> what is she doing here? Ralph? Hello, Ralph. <laughs> well, tomorrow's your big night. I was talking to Alice about it, and there's just one you thing I want... You can save your breath, because I know what the one thing is that you want to tell me. The both of you. That I should quit at the $600 question. Well, I'm not. I'm going on. On, on, on. To the $99,000 answer. But, Ralph, before you interrupted me, I was about to say that I hoped you'd go on to the $99,000 answer. Well. Well, Alice, I gotta admit that now and then your mother shows a small, tiny bit of wisdom. As a matter of fact, I can't wait to hear you answer that question. Huh. I want to see the expression on your face when you miss it. <laughs> Why couldn't she have been with Custer when he got in that trouble, huh? <laughs> Just for that, when we moved to Park Avenue, she ain't getting a new address. Ralph. I must be crazy to argue with you about this. But you got us moving to Park Avenue, winning $99,000, and you haven't even answered the first question yet. I am going to bed. Big deal. <laughs> Stay in there. Stay there, Uncle Bob. I got it. Don't fence me in. Written by Cole Porter for the picture Hollywood Canteen in the year 1944, produced by Warner Brothers. Correct! <laughs> Boy, I feel you're out of the firecracker. But you run into that master sermon with him, uh, he's gonna run out of hurdles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did do with uh, Mrs. Manicotti. I left her speechless. Yes. She did everything in her power to stick me. <laughs> I guess the English name to every one of the Italian songs that she sang. Oh, boy. Well, I bought a few old movie-type songs and things like that. Don't look at the sheet music. No cheating. No. You don't have to look, pal. All right. You just play them and I'll name them. All right. Up on the songs. Now let's not waste any time. Get going. All right. <laughs> Will you wait a minute, please? Why must you always play da 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 before you go in and play the song I'm trying to get? If I told you once, I told you a hundred times. It's the only way I can warm up before I play the piano. A pitcher warms up before he pitches a ball game? I gotta warm up that way before I play the piano. I hope I don't have to tell you this again. Are you ready? Go ahead and play. Buffalo, written by Warren and Dubin for a little picture called 42nd Street. The year was 1932. Absolutely right. 